G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we are having another crack at AFL Underrated Overrated. I said I'd do this about once a month and uh, it is that time again. So, how this works is you give me a variety of topics to discuss in a video and I have to decide whether I think those concepts are underrated or overrated. In some instances they're teams, sometimes they're players, sometimes they're specific things like a team's forward line or you know things like the Western Derby or something like that. So I put a post on the YouTube community tab and you guys thankfully came through with the goods and gave me some more topics to discuss as per usual. Before we get into this edition, I do want to shout out a couple of new members to the True Footy YouTube channel in Wade S and Lockman Gaming. So guys, I just want to say thank you so much for supporting the channel. All right, let's crack into it. We have a bunch of submissions. Uh, I have moved the members of the YouTube channel to the top, so they'll be given priority. So thanks again, guys. Uh, the first one is from Wade S, the aforementioned Wade, who says, club best and fairest. Are they underrated or overrated? I tend to think they are probably overrated. Um, you know, I'm not too sure how each and every team does their best and fairest in terms of point scoring, but I know for West Coast, and I imagine it's true for most clubs, that the more games you play, the more heavily weighted it is to you. That is also true for the Brownlow, but you know, for, I think for at least my club, at least once upon a time, you could score something like 25 points for being the best player in an Eagles game. So if you missed one game, you would fall further and further behind the pack. So it doesn't mean it means nothing, uh, but it does mean that if you play every game and are a consistently decent player, you're probably going to do better than say someone who plays most of the season and is more impactful so yeah I don't I don't mean to diminish the, the value of it entirely you know a lot of the time the best player does win the best and fairest but there's plenty of occasions where a player wins the best and fairest but you thought there were other players better that year that's also true for the Brownlow medal, but I think, you know, Club Best and Ferris are somewhat flawed in their scoring system. And we got two about the Western Derby from Tiger Walker, forgive me, and a Real Swift, another member of the channel. Real Swift goes on to say the Western Derby is overrated. It's great as a West Aussie, but it isn't as varied in results as the other rivalry matches. There's long winning streaks, and in some cases, uh, a lot of comprehensive wins. The showdown and the Battle of the Bridge are just a little bit better. I do agree with that. It's actually really rare in Western Australia for teams to have split derbies in a year. So I know that happened in 2021. I think it happened in 2012. But other than that, I could be wrong. But other than that, I honestly reckon the same team has won both most years. 2015 is another exception. But yeah, the good derbies, there, there definitely has been some. So I don't want to undersell it too much but they are few and far between when you compare them to the Sydney GWS rivalry or even the showdown in the showdown last year obviously Adelaide won both showdowns despite finishing lower on the ladder that really hasn't happened in the derby for a while generally the ladder is a good predictor of who's going to win the derby and by how much that being said it is still a tense week no matter whether your team is heavily favorite or whether they're not um, they're not fun games to anticipate they're fun games to win though Max Hansen another member of the channel says daylight savings Underrated or overrated? WA are three hours behind and games can start at 4.30 for a night game or 10.45 a.m. for an afternoon game. Um, if I was in Perth, this might bother me because, uh, you know, Friday night games, if they'd started at 4.30, I'd probably miss them if I was working. I like early football. I, I, I realized, I was talking to a South Australian once and they were amazed at the, the idea that football in WA, even without daylight savings, like night games start at 5.30. A game of football finishing at 10 p.m. seems absurd to me. So I guess I kind of like it, but I think the 4.30 part would annoy me if I was living in Perth. Now we got some more contemporary football topics, and that is from Billy Chook, who says GWS is overrated in the fact that they are the flag favorites when they have only played West Coast North and a pretty bad Collingwood team. Bearing in mind, I am recording this before we start round three. They're still in the top three for the flag, says Billy Chook, uh, but they're not favorites just yet. So uh, I agree somewhat, but again, like I've just done my power rankings and I, I did put them top because I did wait into the, the, the fact that they ended last year extremely well and, uh, you know, were a bee's dick off making the grand final and who knows what would have happened had they played Brisbane in that grand final. So they're taking that form in to give them a little bit of legitimacy, but you're right in the sense that their fixture hasn't been great, but we're still getting a read on a few of these teams. And by the time you watch this, we'll have an extra week of knowledge as opposed to me right now i haven't seen round three yet zock devoid says hawthorne's strong midfield and their forward line you put in a tier do i think it's underrated or overrated um yeah fair enough i've probably been called out for a couple of weird takes so to break them down i uh, i can't actually remember if i specifically said strong midfield forgive me i just really don't remember i've said a lot of stuff over the off season i definitely have made the case that i think hawthorne's midfield is quite good and kind of punches above its weight in terms of how experienced it is i definitely have said that and I probably may have been generous with their midfield that has not started the year well. They are missing Will Day for sure but he only won four clearances a game last year and while he's a great player obviously I think he plays a multitude of positions off halfback 
By the way guys, just letting you know that this video is made in a paid partnership with BetterHelp, which is a platform that matches you with credential therapists who are trained to listen and help. There are people I know who wanna start investing in their mental health and start therapy, but there's some aspects of it that they find a little bit difficult. Namely, the face-to-face -face interaction thing might seem a little bit daunting, or they're concerned they might not get matched with the right therapist for them because they might not live in the right area. But that's the convenient thing about BetterHelp because you can schedule to have your therapy sessions in a phone call, in a video chat, or even messaging if that's what you prefer. To get started in the process, all you gotta do is click the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. That will take you to a survey. You fill that out and will help them assess your specific needs. And in most cases, you will be matched with a therapist within 48 hours. Then you have the benefit of if you're matched with a therapist and you don't feel like they're the right fit for you, you can switch to a different one at no additional cost. So then once you're matched with a therapist that you think is the right fit for you, you can schedule your sessions at a time that's convenient for you. If you think you can benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. You can go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy or click the link in the description. Now clicking the link does help support the channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp so you can be matched with a therapist who is trained to listen and help. So yeah, I won't make the case that Will Day back into the side would make them, you know, a really strong midfield. Um, I think they're just a little bit down on performance more than anything. The forward line is interesting. Maybe I did get a little bit excited with their recruits. I definitely said on paper that they have a very strong forward line. Probably over-exaggerated it. But again, we are only two games into a season and Mitch Lewis has kicked two goals from two games. And I have also made the point that I think he is pretty central to this forward line cranking. Like that's the, the, that's the play they're going to build around. I also looked at the supply. So against Melbourne, they only had 42 inside 50s, which is really low. That's like West Coast levels. And they keep like five goals, eight or something in that game. So yeah, hard to appraise the forward line on that. That being said, against Essendon, they had 57 inside 50s, which is very healthy. They didn't play badly, but the forward line probably hasn't clicked in the way that I thought. You know, Gunston hasn't really made his mark yet. It's only two games though. But individually, like Ginevan and, and Dylan Moore and, and the talented Nick Watson, Mitch Lewis on paper, Bruce Gunston, like I, I stand by the, the paper analysis of it. That being said, I may have over-exaggerated. We'll see. The Blues 3497 says early season form, underrated or overrated? Um, a little bit overrated def in the sense that we all get carried away, definitely. Um, you know, we write teams off and uh, we extrapolate how good teams are right now. And, you know, maybe we're all thinking GWS Sydney Grand Final, but things do change over the course of the season. That being said, it does indicate a little bit. It does indicate a little bit, particularly, you know, when you start getting to round three or four. And if there's undefeated teams, for the most part, there are some statistical anomalies, but most teams who would get to 3-0 and 4-0, they generally make finals. So for instance, you know, I'm recording this before Fremantle play Adelaide. And if Fremantle beat Adelaide this weekend, albeit I wouldn't have seen the game, obviously the quality of that game will matter, but I think a 3-0 Fremantle, then I'm starting to think, yeah, okay, then maybe they're back to their 22 form. But it is a long season. It is a long season, absolutely. On the Fremantle note, Pickle Green Guy says Jai Amos. Is he underrated or overrated? Um, Fremantle fans, it's certainly not underrated amongst them. Um, you know, I do get the feeling that if he, you know, played for a bigger club, I, mean, I say that respectfully, but like if he played for a Collingwood, his profile might be bigger. Um, not that that really matters, but uh, I think 41 goals is a key forward in his second season. And I, uh, I'm not sure how many he's kicked, but he's looked pretty good so far this season. Yeah, he's an absolute gem. So maybe underrated in terms of how big his profile is around the league, but that often happens. Players do tend to like, there's tend to be a lag effect when players have like a really good season. Season, takes a little bit for their reputation to really permeate. So Carl says the Adelaide security is overrated. Yes, yes. I presume this is a reference to um, that guy who got on the field. What an idiot. Like, who does that? What is the fine? Like, that cannot, like, that cannot have been a smart decision. I thought the fine was like tens of thousands of dollars. I actually don't know the answer to that. But I just cannot get into the head of somebody who, who willingly does that. That's crazy. Skipper FC says the pies are going into the preseason when they're underrated or overrated. I think you, uh, going into a season, you, you generally should respect the team that's just won the premiership. So people assuming Collingwood were going to be good this year, I don't think that's uh, a bad take. Whilst also, you know, there's always going to be questions around hunger. You know, naturally, if they've, they're 0-3, haven't started the season well, and uh, that has been below our expectations, then by definition, obviously they were a little bit overrated. But I don't think it's a, it's a, a reflection of their talent or the, the quality of system or the quality of players that they've got there. I think the drop-off has been psychological so far. Epic Indian says, as much as I would hate to say a, as a Pies fan, Geelong's recent winning resurgence is underrated. Yeah, probably, probably, considering the strength of their opposition. So like I said, as I'm recording this, they beat St Kilda at GMHBA, they beat the Crows at Adelaide Oval. Now, in particular, the Crows one is impressive because of the ground. So GMHBA, you kind of always expect Geelong 
I mean, I tipped them to win that game. I did tip them to lose at Adelaide Oval. So for me, that was the more impressive one. Like I said, I think the Cats are one of those clubs that people like to project are going to dip down the ladder. Uh, I didn't think it would happen. That being said, I've said before, I put them 11th on my ladder, so maybe even I underrated them because they are looking finals quality right now. AFL Snap says Brady Hoff underrated. Yeah, yeah, he definitely is. Um, that being said, I don't blame people for not watching West Coast too closely. He's probably the best performed of our under-21 talents. Uh, absolutely. I don't know about the role that they're trying him with. I think he's going to have a tough year building that reputation because... You know, we drafted him as a wingman forward. You know, he's became a very good running defender. Now they're playing him as a bit of a third tall because he's 6'3", and that kind of makes sense. But I think I think it's a waste of his talent. You know, comparing to, to someone like a Duggan or Cole, who would you rather have the ball coming out of the back 50? For me, the answer is Brady Hoff. So him, you know, playing deeper on the, the third tall forward uh, as a purely defensive player, is this a long-term thing? Is it a development thing? I'm not too sure. But uh, I'd like to see Brady Hoff used differently. Max Hansen points out Sam Twitkowski's smother on Donahue. Yeah, that was unreal. I'll uh, try and get the footage up if I can, but ran a long way. So definitely underrated. Hash Burl points out Adam Saad, underrated, best small 1v1 defender in the comp right now. Um, look, I, I can't lie to you. I haven't really noticed. Like I, I could sit here and try and come up with an answer. Like I haven't really noticed Adam Saad necessarily being the best in the competition at this specific niche role. Um, he's. I've always thought he was a good player. I looked at his stats. His one percenters are a little bit down um, compared to previous years, but his intercepts are about the same. So again, I'm just pleading ignorance over here. I'm not too sure how he stacks up, but I've always thought he was a good player. Riley Burke says Dylan Moore. Now Dylan Moore, I think again, he's been a really good player for a little while now. Um, I kind of think that people have, have, have realized that now, at least if you go in the right places, like if you watch football coverage to the way the commentary talks about him, I think he does have that reputation, whether it, the fans are saying the same thing, I'm not too sure, but three goals and 17 touches in round one last year, he averaged 21 touches as a high half forward and also kicked just under a goal a game. And presumably we'll get better. I, th I think, yeah, he's a jet. Steph says midfielders are overrated. I can't agree. I can't agree. Uh, I do think that they are super important, but I think that's kind of true of every line. So maybe to unpack what you're saying here, you think they are disproportionately given importance compared to other parts of the grounds? I mean, possibly. Possibly. I, I look at some of the the premiership teams, right? And trying to work out which ones didn't necessarily have the best midfield. Collingwood's was pretty good. Melbourne's was fantastic. West Coast in 2018 was probably its weakest line. Richmond as well, other than Dusty Martin. I felt like, with all due respect, it dropped away a little bit after the best couple of midfielders there. I think that was more system. But is premiership teams necessarily the best way of answering this? I currently support a team that has a horrific midfield, and uh, I do think that's probably the number one thing we need to get right. So I don't know if I'd say they're overrated, to be honest. AFL legend says Errol Goulden. Um, is he overrated or underrated? Um, I don't think he's overrated. I don't think he's overrated. But I mean, you look at the Sydney contributors this year so far, and um, he probably hasn't even been in their top three mids. But he hasn't been playing badly either. It's more of a respect of like Heaney and, and Warner in particular. Well, maybe Goulden's third after that, forgive me. I don't think he's overrated, though. I don't think he's overrated. I think he's a, he's a gem. History of Apple says Freo Dock is in 2024. Possibly, possibly. My only question mark on Fremantle has been, will they shit the bed, um, to quote Will Schofield. And so far, so good. I did have a little bit of concern they'd lose to North Melbourne. They came back and won. They beat Adelaide this weekend. I'll be increasingly confident that, that they probably will be looking good for finals, like I said earlier in this video. In and out and back in, Gross says, I feel Jaden Hunt is underrated. Uh, I do agree. I do agree. I think he's become one of the Eagles' best players. I really don't know if he's in career best form for us or if he was always this good. That is just me being ignorant. But when I saw Jaden Hunt play for us, in 2023, I was like, oh my God, like, thank God we got this guy. Obviously, we didn't have too many shining lights last year, but now he's way better than I thought he was. He's been really good. Rigby Tatterson says Subiaco Lions. Uh, are they underrated? I don't really follow the waffle, to be honest with you. I, I know that Subiaco was dominant for a long time, um, and I don't think they were so good last year. So I don't know. Finn McNeil's got a few I'll rattle off. He says, Adelaide are overrated. Geelong and Melbourne are slept on, and Collingwood's being overhated just because they lost to three top eight sides. So, is Adelaide overrated? No, I, I, we'll see. The proof is in the pudding. It just might be that a young team expected to take that step. Maybe maybe this is just an off year for them, but they've only played two games. I'm not going to say overrated, but there is a chance that they don't have the year we're expecting. Geelong probably slept on, definitely. Melbourne probably, yeah, I, I felt like that in the preseason. In the sense that this this idea that you know the, the off-field stuff would necessarily ruin them, I, I don't think so. I think they've looked really good so far this year. And Collingwood... Agreed. It's been a tough fixture. There's no doubt they aren't playing that well, but it's not like they've been completely smacked by middle-of-the-road sides or anything. 
VCS7083 rattles off a few more underrated players he wants to mention. Brody Smith from the Crows, I'd agree with that. Kieran Briggs from GWS, I do agree with that as well. I do think now he's starting to get a bit of a rep. That being said, I think Tristan Cherry did pretty well against him in round one. Jamie Elliott, is he underrated? I think he has a profile, but 39 goals last year, like he was really good. We already talked about Dylan Moore and Sam Palpepper, I would agree with. 31 goals as like a ferocious tackling forward. I think uh, I think he's an absolute gun. Gentex points out Brent Daniels and Callum Brown from GWS. Agreed. I feel like Callum Brown is starting to get a little bit more known. Uh, what he keep five goals in opening round? Again, that's probably helping his profile, but he is a good player. Judd McVie, definitely agree with you there from the Melbourne Footy Club. Jamie Cripps probably is the most underrated eagle I can think of in the last 10 years. Brad Shepard, a worthy adversary there. And James Warple. Again, I, I kind of lose track. I feel like Warple's been up and down. So I don't know if he's underrated or overrated. It probably swings like a pendulum a little bit. So I'm not too sure, but maybe. And finally, Mick Schwager says, LGBTQ+. It's a, it's a hard topic to assess as underrated or overrated. Well, they're not overrated. Uh, maybe underrated, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's say underrated. Let's say underrated. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for taking part of Underrated Overrated once again. I will uh, probably be doing this again throughout the season. So let me know in the comments uh, if you want to see it again. We've also got unpopular opinions coming out very soon. So thank you so much for your contributions. Thanks so much for being subscribed. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.